We need a new economic vision for the world, and we need a new economic game plan to deliver it. The vision and the game plan have to be compelling and practical. It has to move as quickly in the developing world as the developed world. We have to get off carbon completely by 2040 to save this planet, to save our species, to save our fellow creatures, to save our civilization. So now we look to you. It's your moment. It's your generation. It's your century. You have to make this happen. We're now at a turning point where we have to think about our species and we have to think about protecting the interests of our fellow creatures and we have to save this planet from ruin. I don't know of any generation in history that has had a task this challenging. So my hope is that this generation will stay focused, stay disciplined, and between you and your children and grandchildren over this century, you have to turn this world around. You have to get it right. Okay, shoot. Uh, you said uh, we are on the verge of excision. And you say that uh, our chances, the new generation, yeah. come in. Uh, what about the so-called third world, which is uh, growing bigger and bigger yeah. in industry and probably saying this is our turn to yeah. get big? That was my last thought, comment, but I thought everybody was going too long. So the, the third industrial revolution is going to move quicker in the developing world. Hmm. And the reason is... Uh, let me use an analogy. My wife and I have a very old house. We've been renovating this house for 22 years, almost 21 years. It's easier to build a new house and cheaper from scratch than to renovate an old one. In much of the developing world, there's no infrastructure. 25% hmm. of the human race has no electricity at all, and another 20% has marginal electricity. So they can leapfrog right in. And we saw this with cell phones, which really surprised us. All of a sudden, in Africa, where there's no electricity really below the Sahara to speak of, uh, except for South Africa, all of a sudden millions of people were getting cell phones and they didn't even have the electricity. Then the cell towers came. So I'm working with the United Nations, and we're going to lay out the Third Industrial Revolution Plan to 177 countries in a keynote address in late November in Vienna. This is the plan. The developing world is going to move qu very, very quickly on this said how important it is today the role of the internet, but we know for sure that many people are on the internet are not aware of the potential it can express, it can release from people. So do you think that the, also there is a, a problem of teaching them how to use it to realize what you were uh, anticipating before? Well, I think so. You mean to use it as a social, cultural, and political tool, and not, not just a research engine. Sure, but I think for the younger generation, and maybe the older folks, I mean, I think everybody you know, that's uh, on Facebook or on any social sites, they know the power of it, I think. But what you're saying is how do they know the inherent power and create a political and social movement out of it? That's, that's a different story. That's where the October 15th comes in. Because what you're saying is it isn't enough just to use these tools. What we need to you do is make these tools an asset so we can create a new economy, a new society for the world. That's your job. That's the mission of the, of the blogs all over the world. Uh, what I would say is spread the narrative, spread the story. Uh, a lot of folks have never thought of a third industrial revolution. They've never thought of using the Internet to create their own energy. They've never thought about lateral power. So, in a, in a sense, that's why I wrote the book. And the book's really just a chronicle of what your generation has done and just sort of connecting those dots. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's, it's up to you folks. You've got to spread the word.